you are an extension, an immediate extension of sorts. No distortions, pure confidence, pure faith, pure knowledge, pure doubtlessness. And can you see how simply imagining such a frequency of consciousness actually triggers it within you? You're actually becoming the state you're imagining. Whatever you focus your consciousness on, you become the frequency of. Now, if something would happen that would be perceived by your mind as negative in a circumstance, like a phone going off, maybe, disturbing your imagination, how could you still focus, deliberately focus your consciousness on a spectrum of consciousness, on a level of consciousness, on a frequency, an area of the space that you are that is not disturbed by that, that actually sees the holistically positive nature of your present circumstance? I wish for you all to be this joy at all times, to be able to realize, well, you are able to realize it, but to realize that you always have a choice where you focus your consciousness. You don't always have a choice, at least not personally, exactly what circumstance comes into your consciousness. That does not mean that you don't have a choice where you focus your consciousness on, in what state of being you focus your consciousness on. You may have a thousand negative thoughts about your present circumstance, but it's still up to you to focus on those thousand negative thoughts or to focus your attention, to focus your consciousness into, for example, the space of non-duality or into simply a space of being that's not affected by that. You can still focus your consciousness on the sense of doubtlessness, on the memory or the imagination of that light being that really is your higher self. It is yourself. It's not an external being. You always have a choice, regardless of what comes up in your mental body, your emotional body, or to your physical body. Whatever appears to you, it's up to you where you focus your consciousness in. In a sense, we could say, from this beingness perspective, that's the only choice you have at this point, at this stage, in this physical embodiment. The only choice you really have is the state of being you adopt toward whatever appears not whatever appears. It's up to you what you focus on, sincerely. Not until you realize it. It's not up to you if you don't realize it's up to you. But then it's still up to you, from a higher perspective, to not realize that it's up to you. You want that blindness, but now since you're all here, I assume you're ready to start to become more aware of the fact that it is up to you. It has always been up to you, unconsciously up to now. But from now onward, you'll bring more and more consciousness in the fact that you can focus your consciousness on anything you like. There's never a situation in which you cannot recognize something positive as a means to connect to your state of holistic positivity or your high frequential state of being. No matter the circumstances, you can always find something positive. One that I like to use that seems to apply to pretty much every situation is to simply shift your consciousness to the level of molecules or atoms. Something can be going haywire all around you. People and children can be raped all around you. Forgive the language here. But that could happen, potentially. You could be in a war torn area where you see people being decapitated. And the molecules have an entirely different experience. The atoms are still dancing. People are still learning about themselves for their higher good. And this physical life is just a temporary play. So decapitating somebody's head, if that's what's happening between two beings, you can also see from the perspective that they actually agreed to have that experience for the purpose of well-being. Not all is as it seems. In fact, everything is not as it seems. It all depends on your perspective. Now what's the purpose? Not of sugarcoating, not of avoiding, but what's the purpose of seeing of focusing your consciousness into the positive, the holistically positive, in any circumstance, is that it keeps you in a state of where you're able to be of most benefit to yourself and everybody else. Seeing it in a negative way will only reinforce the situation in that way through you. Responding with fear and horror and judgment is not going to help anyone. You're doing the very thing that you're witnessing. You're making a judgment. Decapitating somebody's head is not inherently bad. I won't recommend doing it for fun, but it's not inherently bad. The moment you judge it 
as inherently bad. You're focusing your consciousness into that energy, into that frequency of judgment, into the frequency of this is wrong. And how do you feel? You feel wrong. And so your help or activism or whatever it is may come from that state, which will only perpetuate and fuel what you see. And what you see is not inherently wrong. What you see is judged inherently wrong. What you see is your own judgment. So what you're giving to the world in that circumstance is your own judgment. And your judgment is of a low frequency nature. So what you'll reinforce is of a low frequency nature. The only way you can be of service in such circumstances is to have at least some part of your consciousness be rooted in some type of positivity. Some type of, not positivity and oh everything is fine, but positivity again, holistic positivity. Like in knowing that everything is happening for the purpose of a higher good. Or whatever perspective you wish to focus on in that moment that anchors at least a part of your energy. I'm not assuming that we're all able, or that even I'm able to, stay completely holistically positive in such circumstances. Nevertheless, if you have a large amount of your being, of your consciousness, projected into something holistically positive, something connected to faith, to unity, to beingness, or even just positivity, it has a similar effect, then you're able to help from that place. Then you're able to act. But let's assume that most of us do not experience these things on a daily basis, those extreme, acute, physical torture and torment situations. Let's bring this down for a moment to something more everyday business for all of us. Can anybody come up with a horrible situation that's pretty everyday? It doesn't have to be personal. It can be something you see on the news every day. But whatever. Homelessness. There's one perspective that would say, that would immediately assume and express the energy of homelessness is bad. Homelessness is sad for those people. Homelessness is terrible. We need to do something about it. That would be the overall, I would say, the conditioned general response that we have in common, right? Like you feel for them. Why do you not feel for the rich guy in the palace? Is he better off? You don't know. Is he better off? You don't know. A homeless guy can be the happiest person alive. Thing, my point being is that you can adopt so many different perspectives to the same situation that once you practice this in real life, you start to see that there is no one way something is. There is no one truth. There is no objective reality happening there. It's all a show. It's all a show in consciousness.